This video will cover the topic, Finding, Evaluating, and Interpreting an Inverse Function for a Given Linear Relationship. In order to find the inverse of a function, f inverse of x, we first replace f of x with y, and then we swap the positions of x and y. Then we solve for y, and the result is the inverse function. When it comes to applying inverse functions, it is important to know what the original function is representing, as well as what the inverse represents. Let's work on an example together in order to see this more clearly. Goran is walking. His distance d in kilometers from Glen City after t hours of walking is given below. d of t equals 11.6 minus 4t. Complete the following statements. Let d to the negative 1 be the inverse function of d. In this case, we call d to the negative 1 d inverse. Take x to be an output of the function d. Part A says which statement best describes d inverse of x, and it gives you the four choices. Part B wants us to find d inverse of x, and Part C wants us to find d inverse of 6.4. I'm not really sure where to start. This looks like so much based off of one function. When it comes to word problems, the amount of information involved can be overwhelming. In order to make this less overwhelming, let's break the problem down into different parts. So part A is asking what statement describes the inverse function. Let's remember an important property of inverse functions. That the domain of a function is the range of its inverse, and the range of a function is the domain of its inverse. This means that the inverse will be solving for time based on Gorin's distance from Glen City, since time is the domain of d of t, and the distance is the range. So the answer to part A is the first choice. The other choices do not make sense in this context according to the definition of an inverse function. Hmm, alright, I think I understand this, but now we need to find the inverse. How would we start? We will start by rewriting the function given to us. Since they would like the inverse to be written in terms of x, we will rewrite the function as y equals 11.6 minus 4x. Then we will swap y and x meaning wherever there is an x, we will write a y, and wherever there is a y, we will write an x. Does this mean we write the function as x equals 11.6 minus 4y? Yes, so we now want to solve for y. The result will be the inverse function we are looking for. So, is the inverse of d x minus 11.6 all over negative 4? Yes, you are right, but let's work the whole thing out to show the steps. We can first subtract 11.6 from each side. This results in x minus 11.6 equals negative 4y. Then to solve for y, we divide both sides by negative 4, which indeed results in y equals x minus 11.6 all over negative 4, which is equal to d inverse of x. Good job, that's the answer for part b. This leaves us with part c. We need to solve the inverse for x equals 6.4. This means we have 6.4 minus 11.6 divided by negative 4. After simplifying the numerator and dividing everything, we find that d inverse of 6.4 equals 1.3, which is our answer for part c. Let me make sure I understand everything. First, we identify what the domain and range are in relation to the problem. This helps us to know what the inverse function will represent. After understanding this, we can solve for the inverse function. And once we know the inverse function, we can solve for the output, substituting in a given input value of x, assuming the x value is in the domain. Is this correct? Yes, it is. Seems like you have a pretty good understanding of inverse functions now.